Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. I am Raghav Zara, a PhD scholar from Government College University, Faisalabad. I am obliged to welcome you all on second day of third international conference on applied zoology 2020-20 on behalf of organizing committee of ICOS 2020. I'm grateful to the committee to provide me privilege to communicate as moderator of third session of third international conference on applied zoology 2020. Let's begin our session with the first talk by Muhammad Asif from Wahab Institute University. He will be delivering his talk on first report regarding the simultaneous molecular detection on ana of anaplasma marginale and Thileria annulata in equine blood samples collected from southern Punjab in Pakistan. please mohammad asif assalam alaikum everyone uh, i am mohammad asif i am a phd scholar uh, from bzu pakistan uh, i am today we are discussing about the simultaneous detection of anaplasma marginale and thelidia annulata in blood samples of horse and equine horse and donkeys that were collected from south punjab in introduction uh, we know that pakistan is a uh, agriculture country and uh, we have a lot of livestock animals uh, we have selected the equines in equines there are horse donkey and mules they are used for daily income transportation of the people carriage of the goods and agriculture purpose there are many diseases in uh, different types of livestock uh, we have selected only two the anaplasmosis and thleria annulatus both are tick borne diseases Uh, one of them is due to the gram negative bacterium and other is due to the protozoan parasite this is the life cycle of anaplasma basically it is a tick borne disease uh, so with the help of ticks it can transmit from one uh, organism one host to the other host and uh, also that is uh, the thleria annulata uh, it is a protozoan so it can change from one uh, life stage to the other life stage and from tick to the horses are the equines the aim and objective was uh, to detect the anaplasma marginale and thleria annulata in blood samples uh, of the equines also to report the potential risk factor associated with anaplasmosis and thleria annulatus uh, also to demonstrate the effect of these parasites on the hematological uh, parameters of equines from the concerned district DNA was extracted by an organic method. We have collected uh, about 195 uh, animals that were quite healthy. PCR was done. The annealing temperature was 56, and uh, we done about for 30 cycles. Also, uh, in addition to PCR, we also done the CBC with the help of uh, analyzer. Uh, the statistical analysis was done. Uh, we apply the t test and feature exact test for the analysis of the data this show the gel picture some of the uh, samples were co infection like this sample and this sample uh, this animal was co infected by anaplasma marginale and thleria annulata these mm, tables show the prevalence of uh, parasites in horse and donkeys uh, we also detect the correlation of the prevalence of the parasites with the sex and the age of the animal this show that uh, more female were more prone to disease as compared to the male organisms there was no correlation with the age but with the sex Uh, gender and the sex the more females were more prone to disease as compared to the uh, male organisms this table also show the uh, significant correlation with the gender these tables show the effect of presence of the parasites on the different uh, blood parameters of the organisms and these parameters are highly significant due to the presence of the parasites there is elevation and decrease of the uh, these parameters in both the parasites in case of anaplasma marginale and in case of thleria annulata both the uh, horse and donkeys were 
affected. This is the phylogenetic tree of the partial gene sequences. In sequencing, we have done with three strains for anaplasma marginal. Uh, they were identical to the Israel and Iraq samples. In case of Thleria nulata, we reported the two uh, strains that were identical to the Indian and the Pakistani uh, strains. Conclusions. Uh, we have used a multiplex BCR for the simultaneous detection of anaplasma marginal and Thleria nulata in equine samples for first time in Pakistan. The female horse and donkeys were found more susceptible to both the parasites and the other infected animals had severely disturbed uh, blood count. We recommend this technique to the livestock owner for the prophylactic detection of anaplasma marginal and Thleria nulata in different animals not only in equines but also we can put them into the cattle and the other herds thank you so much thank you muhammad asif for such an informative talk now moving towards our next talk by dr asma noreen from university of lahore she will be delivering her talk on acute toxicity assessment in labio at cyprinus carpio exposed to tenry apollinaries Please, Dr. Asma Noreen. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Asma Noreen from Department of Zoology, Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology, the University of Lahore. And uh, today the topic of my presentation is Acute Toxicity Assessment in Labia Ruita and Cyprina Scorpio Exposed to Tenry Effluents. Leather or tenry industry is the second largest export earning sector of Pakistan's economy. It contributes 5% GDP of the con uh, country and provides employment over then uh, 5 lakh people in Pakistan. Various leather sectors are working throughout the country. There are over then uh, 2,500 registered and unregistered tenries present in Pakistan. Sialkot, Karachi, Kasur, Kurangi, Gujramala, Multan, Lahore, Faisalabad, Sahiwal, Hyderabad and Peshawar are the main sites where leather industries are established. There are 784 leather units, 461 leather garment manufacturing units and over 524 footwear units in this country. Leather industry is associated with high water consumption and each ton of uh, tanned skin needs up to 4,000 liters of water. Although leather industry plays very important role in the economy of country, but at the same time during tanning process, a large number of chemicals are used that are drained out into streams, ponds, and rivers without any treatment, which causes the groundwater pollution. A single tannery can cause the groundwater pollution in a range of about 7 to 8 km radius around it and that has a devastating impact on aquatic life, birds, animals and human beings. The tannery effluents mainly contain sodium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, sulfate ions and chromium that results in mutagenicity, carcinogenicity, kidney, stomach, and heart diseases in animals. Next is the layout of, uh, of this experiment. In the first step, labio rahita and cyprina scarpio finger links were obtained uh, and they were acclimatized to uh, laboratory conditions. They were provided with fluorescent light and they were 
fed with commercial feed. Then healthy fish fingerlings were screened out to start the experiment. Uh, then uh, water samples contaminated with tannery effluents were collected and uh, uh, both kinds of fish species they were shifted to glass aquaria. Then uh, tannery uh, effluents that were collected, they were diluted and fish were f exposed to these tannery effluents. Then uh, the next step is the uh, collection of water quality and fish mortality data. Fish mortality and water quality data was collected and uh, 96 are LC50 and lethal concentrations of the tannery effluents for uh, two species of fish were determined. The various uh, statistical tools that were used uh, in this set of experiments were uh, pro uh, probit analysis, analysis of variance, and two keys test. Uh, these are the results. Uh, the, uh, these two figures they indicate the graphical representation of Labio rohita mean mortality in terms of a, a percentage when they were exposed to tannery effluents. Uh, and the figures, uh, both of the figures indicate that the mortality of fish increase with a continuous increase in the concentration of the tannery effluents. The determined values of 96 are SC50 for Liberita uh, uh, and Citrina Scorpio are 56.33 and 86.03 percent, while the mean lethal concentrations for the two fish species are 87.94 and 111 percent. This is the uh, data indicating the mean water quality uh, parameters for the two fish species exposed to tannery effluents during acute toxicity trials. Uh, from the uh, Finding of this study, it is concluded that the sensitivities and the tolerance limits of two fish species, they vary significantly due to their physiological differences. The fish species with high sensitivity has low tolerance limits and vice versa. The toxicity of metals to the fish is strongly affected by the physico-chemical parameters of the test media. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Asma, for such an astounding talk. Let's move towards our next talk by Anika Kesser from Government College University, Faisalabad. She will present her research work on histopathological evaluation of gills and liver of fish treated with different doses of silver nanoparticles. Please welcome Anika Kesser. First of all, I would like to thanks to Applied Zoological Society of Pakistan that give us a great opportunity to present in third international conference on applied zoology. I'm Aniga Kesar from the Department of Zoology from Government College University, Faisalabad, and my topic of research was the histopathological evaluation of gills and liver of fish treated with different doses of silver nanoparticles. Here is an introduction of aquaculture. Aquaculture is an industrial process of raising aquatic organism under controlled environmental factors. And it is considered as world fastest growing sector for fish farming. Basically the fishery sector contributes significantly in Pakistan's economy and food security. About 193 freshwater and 800 marine species are commercially important in Pakistan, but none of the marine species yet practiced for being cultured. Only the freshwater species are cultured in Pakistan. It contributes about 1% of the country's GDP. And Punjab, Sindh, and KPK are uh, the basically the that provinces in which the aquaculture is practiced and 60,470 hectare area is utilized for the cultivation of the aquaculture. Here are the cultured species in Pakistan. Only seven warm water species and two cold water species are cultured in Pakistan that are common carp, grass carp, silver carp, big head carp and Indian major carp. In cold water species, brown trout and red bull trout was, uh, are cultivated. Indian major carps are basically uh, very important 
uh, as their uh, economical importance as well as in for the human nutrition these include the ketla ketla sir highness migala and the lepurohita lepurohita is basically the fish uh, fresh water fish and it is also known as the, the riverine fish these are the bottom feeder herbivores and they have the vital role in human nutrition and highly commercial edible fish species cultured in asia it is considered as model species model uh, fish specimen of bony fishes nanotechnology is basically one of the highly anticipated technology which describes measuring manipulation and manufactures of materials at their atomic or molecular level these are so small particles or materials usually ranging from 1 to 100 nanometers these are known as nanoparticles nano means billions of a meter and uh, these are used in various discipline of sciences and medicine for different purposes uh, specifically silver nanoparticles are used in aquaculture for their antibacterial and antifungal properties against fish pathogens these are highly toxic to microorganisms so the aim of the object the aim and objective of this study was to investigate the effect of different doses of silver nanoparticle on lepurohita and to investigate the histopathological evaluation in gills as well as in liver of the uh, lepurohita treated with different doses of silver nanoparticle for that purpose the silver nanoparticles was prepared and the spherical shape bright yellowish color sil silver nanoparticle of about 10 nanometer in size was prepared by the chemical reduction method after the preparation the characterization of silver nanoparticle was done by using ultraviolet visible spectrophotometer and scanning electron microscope uh by the ultraviolet visible spectrophotometer we uh, observed the optical density of that particles which shows the 400 nanometer absorption spectra that indicate that that small particle was the silver nanoparticle and the, similarly the size and shape was observed by the scanning electron microscope that shows these uh, that particle was small in size and have spherical shape the fish divided into four groups control group treatment 1 treatment 2 treatment 3 uh and uh, low concentration to high concentration trial was for about uh, 14 days after the 14 days the dissection and sampling was done and basically gills and liver tissues was collected uh, uh, for the histology and the histological yeah. slides then observed under optical microscope and the results was uh, as shown in this diagram histological changes in gill section control t1 t2 t3 Uh, and different type of alterations was observed with the uh, concentration different concentrations of the silver nanoparticles these are alterations was the partial gill lamella fusion lifting of gill epithelium maneurism congestion inflammation sphere lamella fusion and hyperplasia all these alterations was increased in number with the increased uh, concentration of the silver nanoparticles similarly the histological changes in liver section was observed uh, under 40x magnification and different type of alterations was observed uh, in different type of tissues like in control t1 t2 and t3 and number of these uh, are different type of alterations was recorded or observed for the statistical analysis and here are the results of statistical analysis that shows that in treatment 3 which have the high concentration of the silver nanoparticle shows the high number of alterations in both tissue skills and liver so uh, uh, these are the different type of alterations was observed in higher concentration of silver nanoparticles in gills and liver we conclude that higher dose created significantly higher alterations so here are the recommendations that nanoparticle should be used in suitable amount and there should be a proper way of biodegradation after their use and the toxic potential of silver nanoparticle must be carefully assessed before their use here are the references thank you for all your attention thank you anika kesar for delivering such an amazing talk moving towards next talk by anila riaz from kohat university of science and technology 
She will present her talk on evaluation of biocontrol activity of fungal isolates against hyalomatics in cattle. Please, Anila Riaz. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to third international conference on applied zoology. This is Anila Riaz. The topic of my presentation is evaluation of biocontrol activity of fungal isolates against hyalomatic in cattle. This is introduction of my presentation. Hyloma is a genus of hard body ticks. It has extensive series of host and topographical distribution. Livestock is a subsector of Pakistan agriculture, which contribute approximately 56% of value in agriculture and nearly 11% to the gross domestic product. It is the big bone of the economy of our country where 35% income of the 8 million rural families are associated with it. 8% of the world cattle population is infested with tick. Control of tick has historically been dependent on the chemical acaricides, but it caused several problems including uh, an undesirable effect on the environment and toxic to human. Microbial uh, control using a tropod pathogenic fungi has widely used for tick control. Fungi have been studied for pest control worldwide due to their great efficiency in killing the host, great genetic variability, and uh, relatively eco-friendly. These are, the, these are the objective of my presentation to isolate and identify fungi from dairy farm soil and district correct and to evaluate the biocontrol activity of fung fungal isolates against hylomatics and kettles. These are the material and methods. Collection of soil sample. Soil sample were collected from the dairy farm. The soil were properly labeled by putting time, date, and location of the area and were taken in small sterile polythene pigs and brought to microbiology lab of the Kohart University of Science and Technology for further processing. Sample were stored at fourth degree for the further processed. For the isolation of the fungi, the soil were serial diluted up to five dilution. From each dilution, one ml was transferred to the sorbent to stroke destroys agar plate with antibiotic to prevent bacterial growth and uniformly spread using sterile spreader and incubated at 25 centigrade for five days. After five days, different fungal colonies were observed. The colonies observed were subculture, on its day at 25 degrees for 48 hours to obtain pure culture. After 74 hours, pure colonies of fungi were obtained. After that, the, for the isolation of the, for the identification of fungi, the isolated fungi from the soil sample were further processed to identify them. The morphological properties of fungal as colonies was first observed and they they were stained with cotton blue stain on glass slide, keeping a small portion of the fungal culture. Slide were viewed under 10x and 40x microscope. The morphology and microscopic properties of the isolated fungi were studied in depth with the key to the detection of fungus. After that, for the extraction of, of, extraction of spore free uh, filtered from the isolated fungi, the fungi were first transferred from SDA plate to the flask having broth media. Each fungal isolate was separately grown on PDB and flask and incubated in shaker incubator at 130 RPM at 25 degrees centigrade for seven days in dark. After seven days, the fungal broth culture was first centrifuge, centrifuge at 430, 4000 RPM at for 15 minutes and then the plate were further processed by passing through them through what mean number two papers. Finally, the fungal filtrate were filtered through Melix HA syringe driven filtrate to obtain for spore free fungal metabolites. This was aimed to obtain spore free culture from the broth culture. After that, for the preparation of different concentration, the 
they were made from the spore free culture and definitely by alternaria showed that the fungal filtrate has significant effect on the uh, tick motility the highest motility rate was uh, seen at 100% followed by 75% uh, of filtrate concentration and the lowest concentration in all case was observed at 12%. These, uh, this uh, graph shows the larval motility of hyaloma ticks after 15 days of treatment of post exposure against different concentration of alternaria. Similar in the case, they show highest con uh, motility at 100% concentration and uh, the lowest motility was shown as 12%. Uh, this uh, graph show uh, the larval motility of hyaloma ticks after post exposure against different concentration. Thank you, Anila Ryas, for delivering such an amazing talk. Now moving towards second last talk of this session by Sana Aziz from University of Agriculture, Faisalabad. She will deliver her talk on insecticidal effects of neem leaf extract on control of Khapra beetle Progoderma granarium, a stored grain pest. Please, Sana Aziz. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee of the CARS 2020 for providing opportunity to share my research work with scientific community. My name is Sana Aziz and I am working as PhD scholar at Department of Zoology, Wildlife and Fisheries, University of Agriculture, Faisalabad. Today I am talking about my research project and the title of my research project is Insecticidal Effects of Neem Leaf Extract on the Control of Capra Beetle, that is a stored grain pest. According to need for the project, uh, Pakistan is an agricultural country and chief food of people is wheat, which is grown on an estimated area of 8 acres. After fulfill the feed requirement of people, people wheat also exported to many countries worldwide. During the storage of wheat grains, about 5 to 10 percent damage must occur due to the attack of insect pest. And this damage percentage sometimes increases at 50 percent, mostly in tropical regions due to the reason of favorable environment to insect pest, hot and humid summer. And Khapra beetle is the most destructive insect pest of stored grain products and prefer hot, dry condition and is also often found in store of food and grains, seed processing plants, etc. In many countries of the world, management of insect pest is mostly done by conventionally synthetic insecticides such as malathion, delta methylene, etc., that persist in food and have toxic effects on the environment. So, to cope the problem of resistant in stored grain insect pest, there is supreme need to move alternate tactics of the pest management, which are most eco friendly, economical, and socially suitable. So, the objectives of my research work are to evaluate the insecticidal impact of neem leaf extract against the Khapra beetle Trogoderma granarium. And the second objective is to study the effective doses of neem leaf extract for the sustainable management of Trogoderma granarium. According to methodology, a damaged grain sample including heterogeneous insect culture of capra beetles were collected from different storage of food department, Punjab, located at several places in district Faisalabad. And the sterilized seed samples were taken in jars having 2 kg capacity and collected insect cultures were released in jars covered, covering with muslin cloth. These jars were, collect, uh, were kept in an incubator at 28 degrees Celsius. After the three days, adults were sieved out from the grains. Eggs and grains were put into the jars and were kept at optimum growth condition to rear the homogeneous insect culture. And to prepare neem leaf extract, crude extract from dried leaves of neem 
were prepared in acetone solvent using the rotary shaker by dipping 50 g of powder in 250 ml acetone in cooling oil flask by following the procedure was described by sagir et al 2013 from filtration acetone were evaporated using a rotary evaporation from the final extract further 5 10 15 20 25 and 30 percent dilutions were prepared, and the mortality of Rhododerma granarium larva was checked using petri dishes. These the these all types of dilutions were applied on wet man filter paper. After the treatment, filter papers were dried in air. The dried filter paper were placed in petri dishes, which were air tightly covered. Thirty larva of Rhododerma granarium. were released in each petri dish data of dead insects were observed after 24 48 and 72 hours all the treatments were replicated three times there was uh, at the end of the biosay concerned data of recorded mortality was measured uh, by using the abbots formula according to results you can see in figure number 1 that shows the average percent mortality of rhododerma granarium by using by applying different concentrations of neem leaf extract and different exposure time that are 24 48 and 72 hours the acetone extract of neem leaf extract shows that the mean mortality of test insect increases by increasing the concentration and the exposure time and maximum mortality was observed after 72 hours and after 48 hours you can see 19.20% and after 24 hours you can see 8.42% mortality rate and minimum mortality was found after 24 hours and in next figure the two uh, the shows that the average percent corrected mortality of progoderma granarium by applying Uh, neem leaf extract at different exposure time and different concentrations the acetone extract of neem leaf extract shows that the mean mortality of test insect increases by increasing the concentration and the exposure time maximum mortality 35.7% was at highest concentration which is um, 30% which was significantly dissimilar from all the remaining followed by 25 25% and 15% and you can see minimum mortality rate at the 10% concentration of neem leaf extract according to my uh, according to conclusion different acetonic dose rates of neem leaf extract caused significantly mortality against trogoderma granarium and the presented data about the extract of plants will serve as a direction for proper pl planning of cost and selective effective measure against the uh, capra beetle trogoderma granarium thank you sanasis for your amazing talk now it's time for the last talk of this session by dr kashif zahur from government college university faisalabad he will deliver his talk on genome editing for the control of dengue vector aedes aegypti using crispr cas9 system please dr kashif zahur bismillahir rahmanir rahim assalamu alaikum thank you very much for uh, this invitation to present in in third international conference on plant zoology 2020 I am going to present on genome editing in dengue vector Aedes aegypti for its genetic control using CRISPR Cas9 system. Here it's my presentation scheme. Here in Quran e Pak, Allah Taala mentioned in Surah Bakara 26 ayat, "Indeed, Allah is not timid to present an example that of a mosquito or what is smaller than that than that any of." so it shows the importance of mosquitoes it long to order diptera diptera they are true flies they have two wings globally they are everywhere there are more than 3400 species including 37 genera and all of these species of mosquitoes they are included in one in 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 one family else they feed on juices of flowers and fruits 
all the day they are outside and females only uh, feed on blood for their egg laying so about 300 mosquitoes around about 10% they are disease causing so only females they are responsible for the transfer of uh, diseases aedes aegypti is responsible for hundreds of millions of human infections chikungunya yellow fever dengue and zika viruses here you see there are these uh, three genera anopheles aedes and culix males they have bushy antennae this is called plumose more feathery and females they have pyros antennae uh, with respect to my topic of discussion or topic of presentation and uh, uh, generally on dengue mosquito we have these two chapters on left panel this is dengue fever a gen general perspective this is in tech open we published this in uh, a few years back and in uh, recently uh, it is going to be online with this uh, crispr cas system in insects there is a brief and very good information about this crispr cas system in mosquitoes in this chapter in this book in if anyone is interested to read more he can go through this so let's uh, come to the point on this control measure there are certain control measures for the control of mosquitoes first one is the chemical control which is obviously most quick and robust control and biological control using certain predators and parasites it's not very much reported in mosquitoes but normally for insects we use this there is a mechanical control there are certain electric uh, rackets and certain other control measures that common but not very effective there are culture control to uh, eliminate the breeding places and there are physical control measures using screens and using this uh, Uh, certain chemicals in whitewash and they are putting on these walls and there is genetic control the most obvious method for the control of mosquitoes is considered as chemical control uh, one of my student of mphil he did this uh, work we actually uh, ha got 15 aedes aegypti population samples and then out of these we uh, we found only two positives for den 2 even out of these four serotypes we found den 2 it means if we are using chemical control chemical or insecticides everywhere this is not of not a good choice so there are many disadvantages of chemical control i we can summarize in toxicity to non target organism if we are going to control mosquitoes we are Uh, toxicity to other organisms non target organisms predators and other beneficial organism beneficial insects the second is the biomagnification if we are putting these insecticide into the environment they go to the soil to water and then water to the animals to mammals and then from milk to human beings and the other thing is very much interesting very much uh, uh, alarming nowadays this is genetic resistance in mosquitoes or in other insects one of my student she did uh, this on uh, on this genetic resistance there is a gene knockdown resistance gene we found uh, heterozygous and both homozygous mosquitoes in uh, and and house fly populations in punjab so if there is resistant strains they are in uh, in a in any given environment we cannot have any control so we are wasting our chemicals so there are uh, there remains uh, the strategy genetic control which can, which we can focus this is environment friendly this is targeted and uh, it gives promising results so there are certain techniques which are being used rna gene silencing through rna so idea is this to generate double stranded rna with about more than 20 nucleotides 21 20 Two or twenty-three nucleotides. They target the uh, gene of uh, study, which is going to be tar uh, to silenced. So there are certain drawbacks for for this technique. This is this is off targets. 
for example this is a 500 base pair of gene and you are targeting uh, by using this 22 nucleotides you can have many more of targets so this is in, uh, highly organized eukaryotes like human beings it is not very much uh, common commonly used but it's in use the other techniques is sterile insectic technique a technique, uh, technique SIT normally called there is a Zetech company in UK which is using these mosquitoes and uh, uh, SIT mosquitoes and it's I think in Malaysia, Singapore or in Thailand and either in Brazil they use this technique. This is very much uh, effective technique but it has certain drawbacks as this is zinc finger nucleases which is parallel to these genetic control techniques to, with other techniques but it is not very much focused or targeted there are certain drawbacks for this technique difficult and there is talent technique which is also difficult and there are targets uh, of targets also reported despite of having many of these genetic control techniques there is another technique which is called crispr cas system this is reported technically it is a adaptive immune system reported in bacteria so it has been borrowed from bacteria to the uh, to other organisms so recently it has been uh, being worked in drosophila and introduced in other uh, other organisms crispr is uh, uh, basically abbreviated to this name cluster regulatory interspace short palindromic repeats so using this endonuclease cas9 uh, there is more specificity, more targeted, more focused result, and this is environmental friendly. Environmental Protection Agency of USA safe as compared to the genetic te control tech. So here, this is the, the mechanism of CRISPR-Cas system. Here, you can see this guide RNA. This is basically a guide RNA uh, of more than 100 nucleotide base pairs. To, you have to target a certain gene so you design this guide RNA and uh, along with other components and uh, this is with Cas9 and nucleus you introduce into the cells and this Cas9 causes cut to double stranded cut in the DNA so this DNA then there are certain uh, system you can see afterwards so basically you you targeted or you focus your the change or amendment or mutation in your into your target this is a, a, a next gene which is called male determining factor interestingly normally we have xy chromosome system but in Aedes aegypti there is no xy system there is a certain segment or there is the certain a repetitive sequence of DNA which is called male determining factor this is M factor in M factor there is a gene that is called Nix during certain uh, embryonic stages in developmental stages you can see in the egg stage if this sequence is expressed in in embryonic stage if it is expressed this is going to be a male if it is not expressed there is no uh, repetitive sequence so this is female so you can see in left panel in male this is a pcr of a uh, mix uh, gene so you can see in males it is expressed but in females it is not expressed and this is the uh, below in left panel you can see from 0 to 12 of our embryonic stages it is going to be expressed in the fourth uh, hour during egg stage so in the right panel upper you can you see if male uh, if nix is expressed in females they developed maleness in it, in its uh, body parts and if it is it is absent in males so there is no male genitalia developed in males so this is the m factor from which we can learn that if we express nix in females they develop into males and if it is not expressed in males so they are not no more males next uh, cytologically it is present on chromosome one it is not xy so uh, there are certain information sex differenti differentiation is under control of area of regulatory genetic network of insects 
this is uh, there are certain genes which are in this uh, genetic or sexual pathway there are there is uh, sex lethal transformer double sex and fruitless they are reported in insects this is the whole uh, picture of this genetic uh, pathway or uh, sexual genetic sexual pathway in insects trans uh, nix basically is uh, controlling which is reported is uh, controlling the expression of uh, uh, certain maleness and femaleness in uh, uh, mosquitoes it is a gypti so under nix double sex uh, can produce uh, both the phenotype of males and, uh, and females here and fruitless this is uh, fruitless means if there is no progeny if it is it is expressed so this is the the whole picture shows you uh, certain genes that uh, which are present in the uh, sex determining pathway in, in in insects so you see double sex is epistatic uh, this sex lethal is epistatic double sex and transformer is is upstream of this double sex and fruitless and nix is uh, is somewhere so this is the whole picture we draw from certain research papers and articles are from this uh, website uh, from protein protein interactions so this is the main we found this uh, certain genes which are involved in the sex determination pathway in insects so we are going to focus on this uh, nix and uh, what does it do with this uh, sex lethal and transformer genes so we don't know up to this time but we are going to explore this to know more about the sexual pathway to generate maleness in females so dsx and fruitless double sex and fruitless they give rise to both males and females and if if injection of sex lethal fruitless and genes in transformer they, these are certain uh, uh, information is available uh, in uh, literature reported in uh, albopictus it is albopictus and dorsalum uh, nanogaster uh, so we found uh, through this yeast to hybrid assay a, a physical partner of this mix and we are going to focus on this and when we found technically there are uh, two genes uh, i mentioned this in the circle sex lethal and transformer and these two they are physically linked to other partners of course and we will use these two genes to to have amendments or they to have been uh, changed in future in Aedes aegypti and then we will have these mosquitoes we cross these and we we will be looking for a good line a good strain in the lab to control uh, genetic control genetic critical control at this object type so the overall objectives there is uh, one major objective of this study genetically to generate genetically edited at this object type mosquitoes for the genetic control through this crispr cas system crispr cas9 system and there are certain sub objectives we will use this single gene and multiple genes and we will use uh, uh, the other genes uh, like nix and D uh, double sex and fruitless to know the whole picture of the genetic pathway so we have these sub objectives to perform single and multiplex gene editing for male determining factor nix sex lethal transformer transformer 2 ds uh, 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 dsx double sex fruitless genes and other physical link partners involved in sex differentiation pathway using yeast hybrid assay to characterize nix sex lethal transformer transformer tools the double sex fruitless genes and other physically linked part involved in sex differentiation pathway and we 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 will be able to procure the genetically edited aedes aegypti mosquito strains and to monitor their maleness in characteristics in females so we have this plan of work first we have this collection of mosquitoes we have this strain we are rearing this mosquito strain and after this we have this isogenic this is free of insecticide free of pesticide free of this this is having isogenic background uh, in in this uh, strain we will collect these eggs and then meantime we will design a single guide uh, this guide rna 
and this guide RNA we will clone this into plasmid and then this plasmid will be going to be injected into embryos these embryos they will uh, give rise to adults this we have this G0 population this G0 population we will be going to check the expression of double sex fruitless nix and depending upon the gene which we are going to uh, change or uh, then we have this PCR to characterize this if it is, it is present or overexpressed or not expressed it depends and then we will quantify this uh, messenger RNA using qpcr and then we will be characterizing protein level expression if it is expressed at which level so we will use this special plotting technique so after this we will be able to uh, generate a, a specifically a specific line of maleness in females inshallah so this, uh, I, as I told you, this is the, we have collection of Aedes aegypti mosquito and one strain we will be procuring from uh, abroad from USA just to have a control uh, in parallel. And uh, we have this uh, line uh, in, in, to use to be used for micro injection. This uh, there is a plasmid uh, we are going to construct using this uh, these genes the candidate genes are it is a gypti sex lethal it is a gypti trans, uh, transformer it is a gypti nix it is a gypti double sex and it is a gypti fruitless all of these will be used uh, singly and in, in combination and inserted into this plasmid then we will use this for this micro injection then we uh, as i told you we use this uh, these messenger rna uh, will be transcribed using this uh, uh, pml m36313 uh, will be obtained from a gene this is already already uh, reported so single guide rna will be designed as already reported the procedures so we will use this uh, four hours embryo uh, we will we actually we will get uh, eggs and then we will have this micro injection of this plasmid into these eggs they will give rise to adults and after certain uh, stages and then we will monitor all these stages and uh, after this we will be looking for this strain uh, I would like to mention here there are certain micro injection systems available which is the best one and also certain uh, micro injections or small needles available which are using by being used by these sugar patients or diabetic patients it they can also be used for the micro injection system they are they are also been reported in literature so we will be looking for this micro injection system and as, as well as if it's available a very minute needle for this uh, plasma injection then we will be using this uh, pcr technique and then we will uh, sequence the dna if there is uh, expression of this uh, specific dna uh, specific gene we are going to uh, change this edit this in the genome of Aedes aegypti and then we will be characterizing or quantifying the messenger RNA level using qpcr for this uh, proteins protein quantification or protein uh, uh, expression level we will be looking for this special law technique and then uh, after this we will having this line first line then we will have an intercross and after crossing this we will have a g1 and we will inshallah establish this line in future in our lab these lines how many uh, uh, larvae they are they are being uh, uh, hatched from the eggs we will be count, uh, counting these uh, larvae and from these larvae how many they survive and because after mutation or after amendment or you can say after genetic genome editing they have uh, certain reports they have less survival the survival percentage is less so we will be going to 
observe or record all these uh, hatching and larval development stages and how many they are going to emerge in adults so all these they uh, they will be the data will be observed and after we will use suitable uh, statistical design like this takis uh, hsd test or significant difference test or spss so we can have this uh, data analyzed by this surgical means so i show you the uh, certain results we up to this time we have this so you see i have this circle i already show, showed you this uh, slide so what is the interaction between nix and sex lethal and nix with this transformer actually in uh, aedes aegypti there is no transformer like gene another that is being uh, reported in dosopila so this is called transformer 2 we are looking now nix in interaction with this sex lethal and nix in interaction with this transformer we will be looking for the expression of this double sex and fruitless in these uh, lines after this so this is a huge work so we have started this one using this transformer 2 this transformer 2 is located in chromosome 2 it is a gene sequence uh, can be retrieved from ncbi with the accession id i mentioned here kf22790.1 start code and stop code mature code sequence and five also we have also retrieved this we have uh, designed certain knockout experiments so up to this time we have this transformer to uh, guide rnas we have designed two guide rnas uh, so these with these uh, guide RNAs, we selected these because uh, with certain specific characters. We focus on this because uh, with with these two guide RNAs, there should be no off targets, and uh, they will have good results. Uh, or uh, I mentioned you if you can see here, there are certain uh, specific sequences in. Uh, this yellow color sequence here, I forgot to mention here, this is called PAM sequence. Synchronized by uh, Cas9 endonuclease. So we designed these two guide RNAs having these PAM sequences. So they, these, this sequence is very much specific. So we have to look, look for, uh, there are too many guide RNAs you can generate from this, uh, the whole gene of, uh, of interest. So we selected two with no off targets. So, so generated our uh, plasmid uh, with this, uh, uh, for this uh, gene, transformer gene. And uh, we are working on this up to this time. This is a huge work for looking for the whole gene and then after from these genes you are looking for PAM sequences and then you are going for to look for off targets and then you select this so with this transformer we have this uh, selected uh, this sequence and guide RNAs and this this plasmid and this plasmid is uh, is ready and we are going to make uh, a micro injection using this plasma inshallah and, uh, we will having uh, good story about this uh, the sex differentiation pathway so these are certain references thank you very much thank you dr kashir zahur for such an astounding talk i hope you all have enjoyed this session by listening amazing researchers from different institutes now it's time for the fourth session, which will be moderated by Mr. Saddam Hussain, and it will include talks from the fields of natural products, cancer biology, epidemiology, and recombinant DNA technology. So stay tuned with us. <laughs>